What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to go through three envelopes and share them with you. And let's just jump in to see what we got here. Okay, this first one is postmarked from, it appears, Wisconsin. And it is from former Chicago White Sox. And he has completed one of my multi-cards for me. Or dual card, I should say. I previously got Bruce Howard to sign that a little while back, and I now have Marv Stahl on the card as well. I had a second copy of that card, and I also have his 1966 rookie card with Tommy Agee, and a second copy that is not in the best of shape, because you can see how it's discolored. Somebody took a marker and colored it, basically. And that makes 4 of 4. And I'll probably send Bruce Howard Another request just to finish off that card. I'm pretty sure I got some Bruce Howard cards laying around, but as for a variety for stall, I didn't have anything. <laughs> this is this is all that I had. I didn't have any single issued cards of him. Uh, they do ha they are out there, however. When I was uh, preparing a little bit to mail these, I looked up to see if he had any other cards, and he does. So. You don't have to stick to just these uh, double player cards if you want one with him just by himself. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Stahl, an Illinois native, played his high school baseball in Illinois and later attended Western Illinois University in Macomb, Illinois as well. He didn't play long at Western Illinois because he was signed as a free agent by the Chicago White Sox before the 1960 season. Well, the 1960 season... 1961 and 1962 season he spent all in the Chicago White Sox minor league affiliates he did then spend some time with the Los Angeles Angels affiliate but then was returned to the Chicago White Sox affiliate in 1964 where he spent the majority of his career or not career but the majority of the season in AAA however got a late season call up and appeared in six games during the 64 season. Well, 1965, he would return to AAA and again would have a seven game call up in 1966 or 65. Well, 1966, same thing, AAA the entire season, then eight games at the major league level for the White Sox. Well, 1967, he stuck a little bit longer in the majors, and he primarily was used as a left-handed bat off the bench and a glove guy playing second base. He was not really good with the wood, so to speak, as he's only a lifetime 207 hitter. In 1967, he again split time between AAA and the majors. Well, after the 67 season, the Chicago White Sox to trade, decided to trade him to the Cleveland Indians for Cleveland Indian great Rocky Calavito. Well, he would spend time very briefly in the Cle Cleveland organization as shortly thereafter he was sent to the Seattle Pilots organization in the expansion draft. However, he did not last long in their organization and he played in AAA for the New York Yankees. Well, in 1969, he spent time with the Yankees. However, he was then dealt to the Montreal Expos, and he spent some time in the Expos organization, and in 1970, he played the entire season in the majors. Well, after the 70 season with the Expos, he was then released, and he signed with the Atlanta Braves where he appeared in a few games with the Braves before he was ultimately released by them as well and played with the San Diego Padres to finish out the year in AAA. 1972, he would play some time in AAA, but ultimately after 1971, he never appeared in the majors again. So this is uh, very happy to add Mr. Stahl to my collection to finish off this card. Uh, they both signed in ballpoint, at least it matches, I guess you could look at it that way. But uh, very happy to get both of these back in the mail. Unfortunately, Tommy Agee is not going to be able to sign that, but that's just the way it goes.
Alright, so this next one is postmarked from Nebraska, and it is former Baltimore Oriole, great, Eddie Watt, or Ed Watt on one, two, three, and four. I have written Mr. Watt before in the past, but we're probably talking a big gap, so... I remember getting them at one time in my life, I just can't remember when. I think it was before this channel existed. So let me tell you a little bit about Eddie Watt. Watt played his high school baseball in Iowa City at Iowa City High School. He then moved on to play his college baseball at the University of Northern Iowa in Cedar Falls, which I believe is Kurt Warner's alma mater if I'm not mistaken. But Eddie Watt was there first. <laughs> well, after his time, at Northern Iowa. He was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles and in 1962 made his professional debut with the Orioles minor league affiliate. He spent four seasons developing in the Orioles organization then at 25 years old in 1966 got his call up to the major leagues. Well he started in 13 games and appeared in 43 overall and that was the only time that he would really start any games throughout the rest of his career. Watt primarily was a relief guy throughout his entire career. He bolstered the Baltimore Orioles bullpen from 1966 to 1973. And he would appear in, you know, 50, anywhere from 30 to 50 games a season. And his most impressive season, which... Surprisingly, he didn't make the all-star team. He went 5-2 and two with a minuscule 1.65 ERA in 1969. Well, he was part of the 1970 Baltimore Orioles World Championship team. In 1971, he would have an awesome season again, having a 3-1 record with a 1.82 ERA. Well, after the 1973 season, his contract was sold to the Philadelphia Phillies, from the Baltimore Orioles for cash. He would spend the 1974 season with the Philadelphia Phillies and after that season he posted a pretty decent record appearing in 42 games, one win, one loss with 3.99 ERA. However, the Phillies decided not to renew his contract. After that season he signed with the Chicago Cubs. However, he only appeared in six games at the major league level and appeared in 44 games at AAA for the Cubs that season. Well, after that season, he signed with the San Diego Padres, which were relatively new at the time. However, they did not put him on their major league roster, and he spent the 76-77 season and part of 1978 all playing in the minor leagues. So after the 75 season, he never played in the majors again. So overall in his career, he was pretty much a 500 pitcher out of the bullpen. He had 38 wins and 36 losses, but his ERA was 2.91 for his career, which is really impressive. In addition, the Baltimore Orioles have placed them in their Hall of Fame. Thank you, Mr. Watt. Very happy to add your autograph to the collection. And we'll move on to the next one. All right, this next one is postmarked from Miami, Florida. And, okay. Unfortunately, he did not return all of the cards. And one was a Pacific Legends card, which was kind of nice, actually. It was a really nice one. And I actually have multiple copies of that card. If I would have known he wanted to keep one, I would have sent two. But, whatever. That's what happens when you send through the mail. And that is to Ken... The Hawk Harrelson on one and two. Um, this is another <laughs> card that has the border colored by, um, I guess, a kid at the time. I bought a lot of cards and I found some cards that were kind of colored on their borders for whatever reason. I guess a kid got bored with his marker one day back in the 60s and colored all of his cards. Um, I actually sent four cards to Mr. Harrelson and only two came back. That's perfectly fine because this one is in great, you know, order. This is probably the one that had the best condition other than the Legends. I want to say I sent like a 71 or two tops, whatever year that All-Star card was, but it was beat up. I mean, it was, it was really 
ratty, to say it nicely. So I'm happy to get these back. This is actually the first time I've ever gotten Hawk back. He, uh, I sent to him, I want to say years ago, care of the Chicago White Sox, and we'll talk about that in a second, and I never saw him again. So I guess getting two back is better than getting none back, which I did the first time. So let me tell you a little bit about Ken Harrelson's career. And we can put it on the board. Harrelson, who was born in South Carolina but attended college in Georgia, was signed by the Kansas City A's as an amateur free agent before the 1959 season. Well, he spent a couple of years in the minors with Kansas City's affiliate until 1963 when he was called up and appeared in 79 games as a 21-year-old rookie. He primarily played first base and played a little right field at that point in his career, but primarily most of his career he was a first baseman. He spent four seasons with Kansas City, actually three and a half, before he was traded to the Washington Senators in 1966 for Jim Duckworth. Well, his tenure in Washington didn't last long because I guess the Kansas City A's must have liked him because they bought him back during the 1967 season and brought him back to Kansas City. Well, that was a very short-term time in Kansas City because after that season, he was released. Well, he signed a free agent contract with the Boston Red Sox, and many Boston Red Sox fans will remember him from having a stellar season. Well, his first year in Boston, he spent time between the minors and the majors, and he didn't really play a whole lot in Boston that season. Well, for whatever reason, in 1968, so that was a 68 All-Star that I sent him, he had a breakout year. It, it, just This is probably the year that he's most revered and remembered for. He appeared in 150 games for the Red Sox, drove in 109 RBIs, and cracked 35 home runs while batting 275. Well, this is just kind of unheard of because previous to this, he didn't even come close to hitting over 30 home runs in his career. I mean, the most he came was... Um, with 23 with Kansas City, so I guess that's close. But most of the other seasons he'd hit five. You know, one season he hit nine. I mean, it was it was not anywhere near the 35 mark. Well, that really put Harrelson on the map, and the following year he returned to Boston. However, he wasn't there long before he was traded to Cleveland in 1969 for... Catcher Joe Askew, Vicente Romo, and Sonny Siebert. So, with Cleveland, he had a pretty decent year. It wasn't as good as the previous season, but he did wind up hitting 27 home runs that season. 30 overall, 27 for the Indians, and uh, only a 3 for the Red Sox, but he only appeared in 10 games for the Red Sox. Well, after that 69 season... Uh, I guess injuries must have set in because he only appeared in uh, 17 games in 1970 for Cleveland and in 1971 appeared in 52 games. By 1972, his career was over in the major leagues. Actually, in 1971, um, he retired mid-season to pursue a professional golfing career. I was unaware of that, so I did not know Harrelson played professional golf. Harrelson, this is a neat, neat little fact, and it's Unfortunately, not in that card. Harrelson has been credited with being the first player to ever wear batting gloves in an actual game, as opposed to being used during batting practice. That's pretty neat. I did not know that. So Ken Harrelson was the first to ever wear batting gloves in a game. Well, after his professional golf career didn't work out, Harrelson returned to baseball, and he started a broadcasting career in 1975 with the Boston Red Sox. He spent some time with the Red Sox and left after the 1981 season and joined the Chicago White Sox. So he changed his Red Sox to White Sox in the broadcast booth, so to speak. Well, this is when he became very popular, and um, he actually stepped away. In 1985, 
to become a executive in the front office for the White Sox. Well, he did that for a couple seasons, but during the 1987 season, he returned to a play-by-play -play announcer for the New York Yankees after we left the White Sox. From 1984 to 89, he served as a backup commentator as well on NBC's Game of the Week, which made him a nationally known figure at the time. Harrelson returned to the White Sox in 1990 as the main play-by-play -play announcer and during television broadcasts. He held this position all the way through 2016, and then starting in 2016, Harrelson cut back his schedule to road, uh, from road games and to only select home games. In 2017, Harrelson announced that he would retire from broadcasting after the 2018 season. In 2019, after his retirement, Harrelson was named the 2020 recipient of the Ford C. Frick Award presented annually for excellence in broadcasting in the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. So, thank you, Mr. Harrelson. I really appreciate you signing these. This one is beautiful with the hawk inscription on there. You can't really see the hawk on that one, but it is there. Um, that card's not too pretty, like I said, but very happy to have that one signed. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Watt, for signing, and thank you, Mr. Stahl, for signing as well and finishing that dual player card for me. I want to thank you for joining me for another episode. I look forward to your comments below. Yeah.